The Breakfast Huddle replay from Money FM 89.3. It's time to turn our attention to the hot seat. Singapore has been attracting more startups from Australia over the past year. We're looking to expand to the rest of the region, right? And one reason behind this push was the setup of what's called the landing pad in Singapore by the Australian government. And since it launched in 2017, the landing pad has paved the way for over 30 of Australia's most promising startups. What's the next big thing that we can expect out of Australia and how does Singapore benefit? Well, I've got two guests in the studio with me this morning. The first one is Taliesin Rayburn. He's the Trade and Investment Commissioner, Austrade Singapore. They are the Australian government's trade, investment and education promotion agency. Tally, good morning. Welcome to the studio. Good morning. Pleasure to be here. Also joining me is Samantha Mark, manager of the Landing Pad in Singapore. That's Austrade's dedicated accelerator for Australian startups. Samantha, good morning. Morning. Thank you for having us. All right. Thank you for coming in so bright and early. I guess, Samantha, first question has to go to you. Give us a quick overview of what the landing pad is. So the landing pad is the Australian government initiative to bring Australian market ready startups to overseas markets. So we run a 90 day residency program for okay. them. Singapore is one of the locations where the landing pad is at. Besides Singapore, we are also running the program in Tel Aviv, San Francisco, Shanghai and Berlin. The intention is to provide access to the, for these startups to access into innovation hubs of the world okay. through a 90-day residency program. How do I qualify for this 90-day residency? <laughs> So you can't be an early stage startup. Essentially, we assess scale-ups or startups um, on five factors. Number one is the vision of the business. Number two is the differentiation, so the USP of the startup in the global market. Number three is the market relevance. Mm -hmm. So if they choose Singapore, why Singapore? And does the product make sense for them in Singapore and the broader ASEAN market? The scalability of their product or service in the global market and finally the traction that it already has in Australia and what that can bring um, to the global markets. All right. We are talking about Australia's best startups anchoring in Singapore. I'd like to get both of you, uh, your thoughts on this one. Uh, What have been some of the interesting and successful startups that have emerged? Tally? Well, I think out of the 30 that we've had, we've, we don't have an a industry-specific okay. uh, focus. So we've actually had some fantastic startups from a whole variety of areas. I mean, I think MedTech is one where we've seen some really interesting mm. companies come and expand into Singapore. Anatomics, which are doing specialist 3D printing for medical applications, has been a fantastic story. Also, we've had quite a few companies come through in the logistics space. CEC Systems, which do sort of collapsible containers for the shipping industry, have done incredibly well coming up here. And, and these are companies that have products and, and, and innovations that are really going to have an impact globally as well. So it's fantastic to be able to support them out into new markets. Samantha, any of these startups uh, stand out for you? This medtech sector is quite interesting, isn't it? It is. In fact, with, in terms of the industry representation, the medtech is, from Australia is very popular in Singapore and the applications that they bring to the Singapore markets. But besides medtech, the logistics space, we also have really innovative solutions that are in our current cohort right now. Mm-hmm. So we have five of them um, sitting in the Singapore landing pad right now. And one of them is the Australia's first social media archiving compliant platform. Oh. So it's very interesting. You don't have, well, based off our competitor analysis, we haven't seen anything like that in Singapore and Southeast Asia. Mm. And they're doing really good stuff. Uh, they have incorporated here. They have hired the first local here. So really empowering the Singapore economy as well. And they've just signed up the first customer who happens to be a Singapore government agency. So we are really stoked about the variety and the wide variety of innovative solutions that Australia startups can bring to Singapore. Okay. This is a question that I'd like to get both perspectives on. The startup environment between Singapore and Australia. I'd like to know how different it is. Can I start with you, Tally? Yeah. uh, Look, it's very different. And I think, first of all, Australia being geographically large, we don't have the same physical 
concentration that Singapore has. So it means that we sort of do things a little bit differently in our startup communities. They're a little bit more dispersed across the country and you have different sort of, I guess, hotspots or different networks. And also, I think because of our geographic size as well, a lot of our startups back in Australia focus predominantly in their first instance on the domestic market. But clearly here in Singapore, you're much more exposed to global forces um, and obviously to Southeast Asia. So you've got a, a more global mindset and a, and a smaller population, so a smaller, a smaller customer group. The, the other difference, the big difference, I think, is around capital flows. You know, our access to global capital is slightly different to Singapore's mm. and our investors are, are different as well as our startups. And so that interface between the investment, the venture capital space and the, the emerging businesses is a little bit different. Here in Singapore, I think there's a much more open approach from the capital, capital space and venture capitalists. Getting them over the line is obviously always a lot of work, but in Australia, the, the, the VC space is still a little bit conservative, I think, from a risk point of view. Okay. Mm. Uh, Samantha, uh, with regard to differences, I mean, being in Singapore, it, it's naturally science plays a big part. We're smaller, manpower is a little bit different, but in a startup space, it tends to be, okay, we can change now, we got to do it fast, and, and it's all about fast, fast, fast. In Australia, because of science, it makes things a little bit different, uh, different I mean. Uh, what are some of your experiences that you've seen? Yes, size do play a part, but also if we look at Australian um, founders and entrepreneurs, if they're focusing on a certain state, okay. then if we compare it in that way, state to a city state like Singapore, then the way the pace of working, uh, the way they run business is quite similar in mm-hmm. that sense. Based on my interactions with different Australian founders and entrepreneurs versus the Singapore entrepreneurs and founders that we have seen, the universal characteristics of a great founder mm-hmm. is the same, regardless of where they come from. As long as you're driven, you're very willing to learn, you are adaptable and you have a whole team who supports your vision. I think it doesn't matter whether you're yeah. from Australia or Singapore, they can collaborate together and definitely both sides have a lot to learn from each other. I like what you mentioned, Tally, uh, adaptability and the ability to work with people is something we tend to take for granted, whether you're a founder or not, yeah? Uh, this morning, I'm speaking with Taliesin Rayburn, Trade and Investment Commissioner, Austrade Singapore, as well as Samantha Mark, Manager, Landing Pad in Singapore. We are talking about Australia's best startups that are anchoring in Singapore. What do you often find startups complaining about here? Wow, I guess uh, the first thing, they don't really complain. Singapore is pretty impressive, I think, in f- the first case. And most of them are really blown away by, you know, what Singapore has to offer. So there aren't really a lot of complaints, you know, and now we're getting down to the nitty gritty. One thing, I guess, would be accommodation costs. You know, it is hard to relocate and spend okay. a long period of time in another market from a cost point of view when you're, a, you know, an emerging business. But really, I think the landing pad gives them a lot of options when they get here. So uh, they really get you know, plugged into business networks very early. So they're very, very positive about Singapore. And, and also, I'd, I'd like to say, you know, Australian companies, you know, they're not big complainers, you know, so they're looking for opportunities. They're here to work hard. And Singapore is a, it's a fan, fantastic place. The ecosystem here is evolving really rapidly. Okay. Mm-hmm. Singaporeans can be complainers. So Samantha, I'll spare you that question. <laughs> but uh, do, you find, do you find talent, say, in the, the digital aspect, the tech aspect, coding, things like that, do you find that an issue here in Singapore? Hiring local talent can be an issue if you're looking at developers or in the tech or talent who who has a tech expertise. Uh, so far, the landing pad companies uh, and alumni that have come through their first hire tend to be more business development centric. Okay. Uh, reason being because um, the founders are more like most likely having to go back to Australia to look after their domestic business, and they want someone local mm-hmm. who understands the flavor of the business here, how to manoeuvre the different nuances that the Singapore market has. So they do want to hire local talent here and it's usually more BD, business development focused. We've had some of our alumni who have gone on to hire technical talent in the region for a variety of reasons. The cost is lower, but also their capabilities to come along with a lower cost. Yeah. So Austrade takes Australian startups and innovators to global entrepreneurship hubs. Samantha, you mentioned this earlier on Berlin, Tel Aviv, San Francisco, Shanghai, Singapore, of course. What's so unique about Singapore compared to other hubs? If you could give Singapore a character to describe it, Tally? I think, first of all, it's connected. 
I mean, okay. not just the ecosystem, but the, you know, the numbers of multinationals here connected into the region, you know, economically, through the people, through the networks, uh, and that's a massive benefit. I think one of the things when we bring up companies here, scale-ups, startups, what we want them to learn from is not just what's happening here in the business community, but how that community is expanding out into the region, is connected into other markets across the region, and there's nowhere else in Southeast Asia, mm-hmm. you know, like Singapore for that, so... With connectivity also comes the issue of cybersecurity, and this was a hot topic last year. Samantha, how is attracting startups through landing pad aligned with Singapore's cybersecurity ambitions? One of the things that we are trying to do is to promote Australian capabilities in cybersecurity and its application that it can bring to Singapore and Southeast Asia. So for our next cohort, we are actually bringing a group of cybersecurity startups okay. who are very keen to engage with the community here, not just the government uh, organisations that have obviously cybersecurity priorities, but also the corporates and how their capabilities and their products and services Services can complement what they are trying, uh, what the businesses and government agencies are trying to achieve here. Tally, anything to add? Yeah, one thing I would add: cybersecurity is a big issue for all all companies and for consumers and members of the population you know, broadly. Yeah. I think though it's an, a non-jurisdictional issue. So being able to share companies and, and access different technologies from different countries is a way we're going to be able to solve some of these challenges. And um, as Sam mentioned, we've got this cybersecurity cohort coming up. But we've already brought groups of Australian cybersecurity companies here to partner and collaborate with Singaporean companies and on Singaporean government side. And I think it's a priority for all you know, markets in the region that see the digital components of their economy expanding. So we've got to work together to be able to get solutions in that space. To put you on the spot a bit, if a startup comes to you and asks you which is a better option to expand through first, Singapore or Shanghai, because you've got landing pads in both places, what would your answer be? Being based in Singapore, my answer is always first and foremost Singapore. But, you know, you've got to look at what the startup's trying to do. And we'd always speak to our our colleagues in Shanghai and look at what's best for that company. Sometimes it might not be Singapore or Shanghai. You know, it might be the US. You know, and, you know, we've got to tailor our services to make sure that that business is going to be as successful as possible. But... There are many opportunities here in Singapore, so we would we would certainly explain all of those to that company and give them as much uh, information as possible. For Singaporeans, what's in it for us and other business? When and are there any spillover effects to attracting all these Australian startups to Singapore? We're we're not just trying to bring Australian companies here. We're trying to build a network between Australia and Singapore yeah. in the startup and in the innovation space. And we're doing a lot of work with Singapore universities, with other um, accelerator programs here to bring Singaporean startups down to Australia. Okay. We're doing quite a bit of work with Enterprise Singapore as well to make sure that the benefits that we see for Australian companies here are also reflected for Singaporean companies in Australia. And we're already seeing really good results in that space. So the, the sort of ecosystems beginning to link up in a couple of different areas. If, for example, one of the polytechnics, Neam Poly, I think is sending you know students down for internships in Australian yeah. startups mm-hmm. back in Sydney. And that's a great program. We're trying to expand that with some of our universities to take uh, Singaporean students down to Australia to work with our startups. And also we're seeing different delegations going down to Australia. We've just had a a group of Singaporeans go down to Evoke Ag, which has been a big Mm. uh, focus on ag tech in Australia, uh, collaborating in the ag tech space and indoor farming and vertical farming. I think it's quite incredible when you get them at the studying phase, that tertiary education phase, because uh, as an adjunct lecturer myself, I've seen students do internships in places like Hawaii, they come back, they're very, very different. The mindset's completely different. So I think I get, I'd like to get your thoughts on this. What advice would you give a startup, um, especially with a lot of mistakes, a lot of lessons that you've seen uh, along the way? Singapore. Or Singapore. Australia? Let's start with Singapore. Well, I don't think there's... there's it doesn't matter that you make mistakes. Um, it's about picking yourself up and learning from the mistakes, be it from an entrepreneur point of view or a business point of view. If you have the right mindset, the right attitude that, you know, I've, I've learned from this, I've made a mistake, I've learned from this mistake mm-hmm. and I'll move on, you can go very far. And this, this not only motivates you, but it motivates the team. And I cannot emphasize how running a business is not just one person's effort. It's a whole team effort. And if everyone is aligned in that right mindset and attitude, uh, they can go very far, mm-hmm. not just in Singapore, but the region. And, and hopefully we want to see them in Australia as well. Yeah, because sort of a social psychological point of view, we, can, we as Singaporeans can be quite hard on ourselves. But what's it like from the Australian perspective? 
I think one of the great characteristics of how Australians work is that they do work together. Mm -hmm. They're usually quite open around sharing information about how their business is progressing. And one of the characteristics, certainly in the startup community, both here and in Australia, is that there's a lot of support. I think if you reach out, people will help guide you through different components or development mm -hmm. phases of your business. And, and I think that's one of the really nice things to see in the Australian community. Often when you go to meetups, people are very open about trying to support each other's business too well. Just like that, you can see how great it is for us to work together. This morning, I've been speaking to Taliesin Rayburn, Trade and Investment Commissioner, Austrade Singapore, as well as Samantha Mark, Manager, Landing Pad in Singapore. Thank you both for coming by the studio this morning. Thank, Thank you, you very much. To listen to more great interviews, download our podcasts at moneyfm893.sg or download the SPH Radio app available on Google Play or the App Store. Play or the App Store. Play or the App Store.